नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम व्यूअर्स यू वाचिंग द स्पेशल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ सनसेट टीवी बिल्स एंड एक्ट्स देयर वी एनालाइज बिल्स दैट इंपैक्ट यू एक्ट्स दैट एंपावर यू एंड प्रोग्राम्स दैट मैटर टू यू आई एम योर होस्ट प्रीति मिश्रा एंड टुडे द स्पॉटलाइट इज ऑन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन 103 अमेंडमेंट एक्ट दैट प्रोवाइड्स फॉर रिजर्वेशन फॉर इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शंस बिफोर द डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट द हाइलाइट्स The Act amends Article 15 and 16 of Constitution to additionally permit the government to provide for the advancement of economically weaker sections. The EWS quota is given independently of the already existing 50% reservation granted for the backward classes that is the scheduled communities and the OBCs. The government notifies the economically weaker sections of citizens on the basis of family income and other indicators of economic disadvantage. So why did we need this act? Well, there are many people or classes other than backward classes who are living under hunger and poverty-stricken conditions. The 10% quota is progressive and could address the issues of educational and income inequality in India since the economically weaker sections of citizens have remained excluded from attending higher educational institutions and public employment due to their financial incapacity. The Supreme Court upheld the validity of 103rd Constitution Amendment providing 10% reservation to EWS in admissions government jobs with a 3 to majority so what are the implications of this act what are the challenges that and much more in this edition let's welcome our illustrious panelists joining us in the studio justice gyan sudha mishra former judge supreme court of india also joining us mr desh ratan nigam advocate supreme court also in the studio we have with us young and vibrant audience I welcome all of you on Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us and Justice Mishra let me begin the program with you. The original intent of reservation policy in the newly independent India was to provide level playing field and opportunities to those who were discriminated on account of their birth. Ma'am but as we progressed we know that there are many people who live under the poverty stricken situations and they may not belong to backward classes. In that context take us to the importance of this act. See, I uh, truly welcome the vision uh, under which this amendment has been brought into. But before I begin on the merit of it, I would really like to, you know, beseech the citizens of this country at large that when we uh, try to to assess the uh, or rather judge the issue, we have to be. acutely objective about it irrespective of which caste creed or community you belong that is what is lacking and also makes us feel conscious very important message ma'am yes. very very important so, so uh, and adding to that i would say the a judge is not the one who judges and gives a judgment there is a judge in each one of us and that will tell you what is right and wrong judging the issue on the anvil on that anvil i think we will all realize that under the constitution the larger framework the basic feature of the entire is the equality equality of opportunity to all and if a reservation has been given to a particular class community and creed that also is for bringing social justice into the society but at the same time when the uh, the reservation is given to a particular group caste or creed to my mind i fail to understand that if that quota is not encroached and the reservation is given to economically weaker section irrespective of any caste how does that encroach upon the right of the other section we have to be you know uh, rise above the sectarian politics and then see and see whether that issue is justified or not to my mind it's a very uh, it's a very welcome and a visionary uh, thought by bringing this to a small section of those who are also economically backward if they are not impinging or cutting the rights of other sections 
all this debate to my mind would have been relevant provided this uh, 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 this 10% uh, quota for the economically backward class would have encroached upon the other 50%. Now, how to bring a reconciliation between 50% and 10%, that's another issue. And uh, I'm not saying on that. But if that right of 50%, like 27%, 10%, and 7.5%, which is given to three categories of SC, ST, OBC, is not been encroached, then why there should, should be a hue and cry that I have got it, but you should not get it. Uh, the, uh, I would add one more point in this, that even the all the five judges, they have upheld the uh, reservation only under Article 16, that is in the unemployment, yes. there is a disagreement. So, 75% of the verdict is unanimous. It's mm -hmm. not... Uh, uh, majority or minority which is being project that this is a majority. It is a majority judgment so far as the reservation is concerned. It's only in employment that there is some grey area and disagreement between 3 to five, 2. So, uh, I would really welcome the verdict. Please, I, I wish to repeat and highlight because in the media reports, I have not seen this that the uh, Supreme Court judgment is unanimous is so far as the reservation of 10% is concerned. Right. It's only the other part, 16% under Article 16, where the um, an, uh, employment opportunity is right. concerned, there the verdict has a slightly different split verdict. But major part is, it's not a split verdict, it's a unanimous verdict according to my understanding and interpretation. Fantastic, so, ma'am. But a very important assertion that you made when we started discussing this issue was that let's look at it objectively. Let's not have myopic vision yeah. and let's rise above the sectarian view. But Mr. Nigam, coming to you now, I'm not getting into the constitutional validity of it at all because the Supreme Court has settled the matter for all of us. It does not alter the basic structure of the constitution. But let's talk about the implementation challenges. Now, the criteria for EWS quota is going to be 8 lakh annual income of the family. Now, that certificate is issued by the magistrates or the revenue official that is mired in political influences and corruption. How do we find a way? Kriti, in fact, before I answer that question, you know, our preamble is quite clear about the entire issue of reservation because everything, uh, preamble being the key to the constitution, it lays down a path for people to interpret the constitution. Now, our constitution, we the people, have secured our citizens economic, social and political justice. So the work economic criteria is inbuilt for any of the policy impetus which the government of India has to undertake, whether it is reservation or otherwise. Now the second security that our constitution provides is equal opportunity and equal status. And is that possible if there is a large section of your population which is poor. The last person standing in the queue, the antiyode yes. concept Antiyodeh. of antiyode. Yes. If he is not touched upon, the level playing field as you talked about or the equal opportunity that uh, the constitution provides will never fructify in real life. Therefore, 10% quota which has been derived from the remaining 50% from the general category has been devised on the basis of economic criteria to give them reservation. Right. Any kind of a controversy which is being created today that it is encroaching upon the 50% limit set by Indira Sani's case yes. for socially and educationally backward classes is false because it does not touch upon that. Mm. That reservation status remains the same. It has not been disturbed. Let that point sink into everybody. Very important clarification. Yes, and, sir. And, and therefore, let us move forward. Objectivity actually becomes a casualty when we see things from a colored perspective or colored lenses. Absolutely. And that should never happen. And although politics in India has taken that discourse, the moment, you know, Something is given to the poor of the general category. Everybody starts shouting. Although, like in CA, nobody's rights gets affected within the country. So in this case, nobody's rights are being affected, whether it is socially and educationally backward classes, 
एस सी एस टी और ओ बी सी दे हैव वॉट दे हैव एंड इन एडिशन द पुअर पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री हैव गॉट दैट रिजर्वेशन एंड ऑलरेडी द पुअर पीपल अमंग शेड्यूल कास्ट शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स आर गेटिंग रिजर्वेशन राइट इंक्लूडिंग द बैकवर्डनेस क्राइटेरिया इन ओ बी सी यू हैव अ क्रीमी लेयर द कट ऑफ यस हियर ऑल्सो दैट एट लैख रुपीज एनी बडी हु इज बिलो एट लैख is covered in this now the issue of implementation is very important you know whenever a law is made in india whether if you take dowry laws mm -hmm. or domestic violence or uh, any other law if you take the intention is good the way they are framed it is good but use also carries with itself misuse of the law absolutely any law any law yeah and therefore implementation will always remain an issue and enforcement becomes very important then here in india because of the multiplicity of agencies like a caste certificate will be given by a civil authority say district magistrate tehsildar hmm. district a revenue officials anyone yes sir verification would be done by another agency exactly and the reservation will be granted by third agency so this multiplicity may lead to problems in implementation it has always troubled the administration has to how to get about get over with it can we think of a one particular agency which does all the three works that may be a solution but then here the the enforcement at the level of the police and the judiciary becomes very important because law must if somebody gets a fake certificate law must create an example out of it to punish him as yeah. soon as possible as quickly as possible and the punishment should also be grave enough maybe you require changes in the law the punishment may be increased and once that happens an example is created of a person by quickly and immediately punishing that person absolutely fast tracking that trial then only people will slightly get deterred in you know breaking the law so that it serves as a very it's a, strong it's deterrent, deterrent uh, because purpose of law and judiciary judicial pronouncement is also deterrence absolutely and right if that takes place you know half of the problems will be solved effective implementation is going to be very very paramount let's take some questions from our audience here please Supreme go ahead introduce yourself and speak your mind supreme court as the upholder and the interpreter of the indian constitution found nearly same act uh, unvalid in 1993 and today find it's a uh, perfectly good in 2002 does this has any bearing of the fact that then it was a government which was in minority and showed itself more secular and today there is a government which has a brute majority of 303 by itself and 329 with its allies and is seen more towards aligned towards the section with this act will benefit the most let's uh, let justice mishra take that question because i think uh, the justice should do the justice here So why two different stances, uh, stances of the Supreme Court? No, no, no. I think uh, uh, that's a misconception in my understanding. There is no because you know if this verdict had encroached upon uh, the previous judgments like Indira Sani and other cases, then it, this judgment doesn't say that the reservation given to the OBC or SCST is uh, has to be reduced or it is bad or good. it doesn't it's it's only confined to the additional reservation given to only uh, 10% of the economically backward class so to my uh, in my to my mind and my in my understanding it doesn't clash with the previous word because that verdict will remain as it is that is that is uh, rather you know uh, that exercise has to be done more seriously about the creamy layer right so to my mind uh, i don't think there is a clash and there is no change in what was given by the previous judgment that's my way of looking at it let's take another question when the constitution was made the reservation was made temporary it was not permanent but now we see that the reservation is seems to be permanent not now but it is increasing the 50% limit is also also being crossed by the jharkhand government yesterday they passed resolution saying that 76 77% 77% yes. reservation they are passing So, don't you think that it is becoming very difficult for the ones who are not reserved? Mr. Nigam, would you like to take that, that one? Yes. Before I answer that question, I do want to reply to the previous question also. You know, in a democracy, parliamentary system, it runs on majority. So we don't use the word brute. Brute gives a very negative term to it. 
that reflects the will of the people. So you don't call the will of the people as brute. Please remember, it has come through a democratic process. Yeah. Now, secondly, earlier judgments uh, which were there and earlier decisions which were taken by the then governments were done, especially the state governments, others were done without making constitutional amendments. That's right. So far as economic criteria is concerned, no changes were made in Article 15, 16 of the Constitution. Therefore, they were struck down. You have to have a basis first in the Constitution for that kind of a reservation, which is actually not provided in the Constitution. Hence, the amendment was brought in under uh, Article 15 and 16 to give this reasonable classification of 10% EWS quota. Therefore, right. a basic a foundation was laid down. Earlier, that foundation was not there. That is a distinction that I need to draw out here. And that is why if you look at Maratha reservation was struck down because that the state governments do not have the power to change the constitution. That's right. So therefore, it was struck down. So that's very important. So he's asking about the constitutional validity of Jharkhand's uh, decision that we you saw. Know, th that exists in Tamil Nadu also. It is 70-80% out there. So it has not yet been struck down. So that is a very important issue and why this a temporary feature which you are saying has almost become a permanent feature now. Exactly. The reason exactly is that the last man standing in the queue, the poor, has not yet got the benefit. Maybe the politics of the day, maybe generations after generations in SC and ST have cornered that benefit. The real benefit has not gone to the ground. Say a particular family is having the reservation generation after generations. So that it has raised a very important question. Should that go? On the other hand, the argument is the social and uh, the educational backwards of that families have yet not gone out of the system. All, it's a very debatable issue. Yeah, and it's so, a very convoluted matter. Uh, Perhaps yes. we need to debate that some other so, day. Let's stick to the act. AWS reservation is only based on the economic status of the individual rather than considering the educational status and the socially backward status. Ma'am, is this a justiciable uh, reservation reform in your point of view? Because we've seen in villages that the person who is socially and educationally backward is backward in all dimensions. But the person who is uh, uh, economically backward is not backwards in the, all the criteria. Over to you. I think what, you, what you're saying has uh, much, you know, substance in it. That merely because if you are not economically backward doesn't mean that you cease to be backward. But the converse also is true. You may be, you may not be backward, but uh, your economy, your economic status, your your uh, economic status makes you that in spite of your not being backward, you cannot translate your uh, dreams into reality, because. Supposing, say, you, uh, I, I'll just give you an example like this. Supposing a family thinks that, yes, my children should go to school and study. Whereas there's another family who is into business and he would say, no, don't go to the school, but go to, first of all, go to Dukan Pe Beto exactly. and then do the business. So, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, that backwardness is that in spite of economic prosperity, he doesn't have that uh, you know that uh, vision desire that, maybe that, vision yes yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. but um, uh, whereas the other part is the other section is that he has that vision but he doesn't have the means he knows that education is very important good education is very important but he doesn't even have the means to send the, his child to a school maybe if the government school comes to a rescue that's a different matter but so both the uh, uh, and our preamble in the constitution envisions that you give equal opportunity to all right. for social harmony to bring in social justice. So whereas one class will have to be taught, uh, will have to be given reservation because he is not sending his child. So he might be compelled that or he might be get motivated that uh, since we have got opportunity to have reservation, he might send the ch his child to school. Whereas the other one will have an economic opportunity by the reservation that uh, uh, he, he knows that education is important, but yet he doesn't have the means. Now this means will have to be pro uh, 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 granted to that 10%. Right. Like uh, one the other earlier speaker said that how long will you go on with reservation? Yes. We will have to go with the reservation because unless you bring a, you know equal society, 
you will have to give that you know uh, level playing field level to, playing yes. field but you will have to give to all sections so one exercise might be that you identify the creamy layer which the judgment has already said you identify the creamy layer and throw them out of the reservation uh, this thing of course you know if he has that uh, that uh, uh, mind block approach that oh uh, don't study go only to a shop then he will have to be you know he will bring he will not get go into that creamy layer you know creamy layer also can be identified basically considering the mindset of right. the family so we'll just quickly take two questions and come to let you me, let me let me just yes. add to just 30 uh, seconds sir see the fact is reservation will continue as long as the people through their will want this reservation to continue we may have different issues and therefore reservation has effectively not achieved its purpose over 75 years therefore it is continuing secondly economic deprivation leads to difference in opportunity and status right that may also lead to social discrimination we have all seen that uh, many people from sc and sts are enjoying the reservation from many generations so don't you think it's a high time for the government to identify these people and uh, restrict them from uh, enjoying reservations further the main basis of reservation is economic criteria as well as backwardness so i think sir for economic criteria sir we have free interest loans sir as well as we have uh, scholarships so can we give scholarship to the uh, to the weaker sections so that it can be resolved sir sir please sir. address both the questions see uh, the issue out here is uh, that you you are saying that the scholarships and other incentives should be given you know that is given to every criteria whether it's socially educationally backward or the economic criteria therefore there is no difference here an additional uh, 10% uh, ews quota has been brought out to deal with the poor which is over and above it is not touching upon the uh, uh, scst quota and therefore it the two cannot be equated that is what i am saying today what we have done through this judgment is to bring about a level playing field to give them an equal opportunity please realize from your own objective thinking whether the poor people whichever sections they belong to if they are not incentivized through such kind of uh, you know policy initiatives do they have a level playing field no they don't that status is also not equal and that discrimination also seeps in so in order to deal with that situation this 10% ews quota to through 103rd amendment to the constitution has been brought in right sir and therefore please remember as objectively as possible as ma'am also said ma'am has pointed out yes sir that rise above yourself think about your neighbor who's not as fortunate as you are and that is where the government without disturbing the existing system of reservation has carved out through reasonable reasonable classification of reservation through 10% ews code so i'm completely out of time thank you so much for giving us that perspective and as uh, justice mishra you said that we have to look at the entire subject very objectively i'm sure my audience here would do that on that note thank you so much for joining us justice mishra and mr nigam well viewers that's all i could pack for you in this edition thanks for watching and stay tuned to sunset tv namaskar